Welcome to episode 3 of Obsolete TV. It's a show about old technology, making it work, making it do fun and new things. Um, before I start this episode, I just want to say that you know I was trying out some new ways of filming, so some of the segments might be a little rough around the edges, you know, but I'm working on it, so hopefully it'll be a lot better for you next time. And uh, without further ado, we're going to go into the first segment, which is Betamax Basics. So what you have in front of you are beta tapes and a beta player. Now Betamax came out in 1975 as a, a means to replace 8mm high 8 stuffer home movies and eventually consumer movies. And um, it mainly competed with VHS. Now at the time, VHS was relatively new and um, for doing home movies and stuff you had to have this camcorder which you basically hold like a normal camcorder but then you also had to carry around a VCR with you and that created a lot of hassle now Betamax what they did when they came out is they said alright let's put all that in one thing so they had a recorder and a camcorder all in one unit and they were the first to do that between Betamax and VHS so you also might notice the size of the beta tape here and just to show you Here's a VHS tape, so as you can see, beta is a little bit shorter. I'll take it out here. You might recognize this particular tape from the introduction sequence. This is just a blank tape. Uh, you can see there's how a VHS would normally have two window holes. This one only has one. The other is covered up by a label. Now, the, there was also something called the Format War, which occurred between VHS and Betamax. Uh, Betamax, a lot of uh, video files out there will tell you, is a much better format, and that it was way ahead of its time. There was a lot more engineering put into it. And um, the actual interesting thing about Betamax was the way that it uh, used the heads of the player to do chroma and luma settings which are color and brightness and um, on VHS you had it doing it where it would use um, it's called a band guard and that would just create you know like a little gap of frequencies but what uh, Betamax did was they used different angles and that created a lot less interference between the chroma and the luma so it had a much clearer picture um, Betamax tapes also had a higher resolution by, I believe, about like a width of 10 pixels or something. And uh, it also had, the player had a bunch of different features that VHS would usually take away and adapt to VHS later, such as freeze frame and uh, a bunch of other stuff. And uh, show you here, these are just some blank tapes. Uh, Sony brand blank tapes, you know. Another Kodak blank tape. So this is what you you know you get at the store or something. And then here, these are actual films on beta. This is a uh, Wild Times and Once Upon a Time in America. Now, open it up here. You can see there's it's a two tape set here. And uh, something else interesting about Betamax is uh, the record time. Originally, I think it was something like maybe an hour. And um, then, you know, VHS has this two hour record time with SP mode. So then Betamax did something called Beta 2, which just makes it go a little bit slower. So the picture's a little bit less, but it's a two hour record time. And um, the thing with that actually is that it shrunk down the resolution by that 10 pixels and made Betamax and VHS pretty similar. So, I'm going to talk about the player now for a bit. Uh, this is an older player. It's a Sanyo. And um, I believe Sanyo at the time, this was called a Beta Chord player. I'm not sure if they weren't allowed to use the Betamax name but uh, it has the beta logo on it and you might also recognize this from the introduction sequence but uh, looking at this player here try to go over some stuff um, 
Of course you have, you know, your record button, rewind, play, fast forward, stop, pause. Down here you have timer, off button, on button. You have your tape speed, so beta 2, beta 3. You have a tracking knob down here. Now over here, you have these channels. So, you know, you can hook this up to an antenna and you can program in your own channels. Regular VCRs, you know, VHS VCRs, they do this as well. And then eventually it went to automatic channels. And then down here, you have some weird settings going on. Like you can turn these knobs and stuff, and there's these switches. I'm not really sure what those do. You can try to figure that out. I'm not really sure. I think it's for recording or something like that. But because when I play back a normal movie, adjusting these doesn't change anything. So now, the top of the player here, you just hit this button and it pops up. And that was also similar to a lot of VHS players at the time. I mean, now everything is front load, but it used to be all top load. Now, on the back here, you have your standard, you know, channel 3, channel 4, antenna in, antenna out. This is a remote pause port right here, so I think if you hook this up into another Sony product and you hit pause on that, it'll pause on this too, like a stereo or something, probably a television. Then you have your video in, audio in, video out, audio out. So this appears to be in mono. And then you also have remote over here. This is probably something else with the remote so that you can control this through another machine. Now, on top of this beta player, this one I got for free in the trash. It actually works, which was pretty interesting to me. Um, I have this dusty old thing right here. Now, this is a Sony brand Betamax player. This one doesn't work. I think I spent uh, 10 bucks on this. I'll go through it. I mean, this is a front load, so this one's a little bit later. Uh, you have your power button. You have your headphone level if you want to hook in some headphone jacks. Now, right here, this is basically the recording powerhouse if you want to record stuff. Um, you have Super Beta, so if you have a Super Beta tape, I guess. Uh, sharpness tracking, slow tracking, whatever that is, uh, audio monitor, hi-fi or normal, audio or stereo, recording mode for beta 2 or 3, normal audio, manual audio, input select from the tuner or the line, an MPX filter, not sure what that is, and a hi-fi monitor, and then you, know, you have your TV VCR button, clear, reset, tape return, clock set, all this clock stuff here, you know, your control buttons, rewind, play, stop, pause, record, and you also have a frame button over here, so you can see a little bit better. So, I guess this is like frame progression, and then you can do like a slow motion, one out of ten, one out of five, and if you go all the way over here, this is like your audio kind of processing area, so you can have your record level from you know left to right and then I'm sure it comes up here with like an equalizer or something but as I said this one doesn't work so I don't know if I could ever get this working um, then this slot here you also have some adjustment some tuning this is all channel stuff right here and uh, now I'm going to show you how to use a Betamax so now I have the Betamax player plugged in to the television using the composite ports. Uh, television's nothing special, just a little CRT TV. And uh, now I'm going to show you how to play the tapes. So you just hit the button up, take the tape, and pop it in. And now just go over here to the play button, and hit play. It makes a nice grinding noise, which is always good, as you can see. TV is doing something here. And there goes the tape, as you can see. Probably look a little bit weird on the camera, but uh, it's working. And there you have your Prism Entertainment screen here, putting a new light in home video, which we all know that Betamax did. So, turn this off for a sneak preview.